Oh boy. This is uh <laughs> you know what? Let's get a position. This is gonna be a therapy session, so let's 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 just let's just go ahead and uh Ah, let's just go ahead and get into position for the therapy session because, oh boy, this episode, it's like it, <laughs> it's like you give somebody a whole lot of goodwill and then instead of taking that goodwill and building upon it, they just smack all the boxes and all the blocks down on the ground that you done built up over like the last week or two. And it's like, why? Why do we choose to do this? Because everybody in this episode made the dumbest decisions ever. Like, first off, the goofy-ass way in which this place went up. Like, like this, this place, and we learned in this episode that this place was a former mining, like, colony. The fact that it took, like, one match, and I'm paraphrasing here because it was, like, a whole book, but the fact that it took, like, one book on fire in a specific corner to blow up this entire coven is absolutely fucking insane. Like, that's insane across the board. Like, I feel as though the way in which the story has been told this entire time is the idea that, ooh, Jedi are bad. And you feel as though you're working towards this super grand conspiracy where the Jedi are like these evil masterminds who, in their zealotry, decided this entire coven had to die. Because, you know, you have like that one Jedi dude whose name I'm not going to remember with the scar on his face. We finally see how he got the scar. We saw him basically choose to kill himself. Then you see that Kel Naka is basically taking the Baresh vow. Oh, he remembers the Wookiee name? Yes, because he was the dopest fucking character who only got, like, one second of screen time. Then you see uh, um, Carrie Ann Moss's Jedi Master, where I kind of feel as though out of all the Jedi Masters that were there, she was the most level-headed, didn't get her mind taken over through the Force, was basically spitting facts about how we should handle things. And then Soul, this was Twilight... Jacob and 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 Renez May all over again, where my man just shows up on the planet, sees Osha, and he's like, "There's some type of cosmic connection between the both of us, and I just can't." She has to become my Padawan, and it's like, dog, like if she doesn't want to come with you, or if her people don't want her to leave with you, like Carrie Ann Moss said, she's old. She's too old to basically be taking into the order to be trained. We have to leave her alone. We're here on other business. Let's just leave the coven to do their own thing over there. And then it's like everybody decides to make the worst decisions ever. Like the coven's like, oh, yes, you know, we're not here for, <laughs> we're not, we're not here to be evil. It's it, it's like we 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 came to this planet to start over. We came to this planet to live in peace. But while I'm explaining this to you, I'm going to use my dark witch magic to take over the mind of your Jedi Padawan and put you all on edge. And it's like, why? We could have just had a straight up conversation with these people, and they seem to be pretty amicable to leaving you to fuck alone. We could have just went down that route. And I like how accepting the Jedi are of other Force cults. They're like, oh, is it a force cult doing so-and-so? Well, let's go ahead and leave them over there because we're kind of over here doing our own thing. But then Soul just refuses to let go of the fact he's like, oh, no, me and Osha, we have a bond through the force. And it's like, okay. And this is kind of where I thought that the episode was going to be, hey, I'm not going to listen to that. You know, we should wipe out this force cult because they're probably trying to cultivate some type of superpower here on the planet, which was... The, the, the concept of, like, the vengeance in the Force, the ven divergence, the virgin, divergence in the Force was cool, right? It's a cool, it's a cool concept where it's like there are certain locations in the galaxy where a vergence may occur and then there's an explosion of Force energy and that Force energy has the ability to bring life back to things that were dead because then that asks the question of for all of the dead planets that exist out there in the galaxy, does the... Does the amount of death lead to an imbalance of dark side and light side to the point where the dark side ends up being so high that a wave of light side energy comes in 
to basically bring the dark side energy back down and in so doing brings life and abundance back to a planet. That's a cool fucking concept that we could have explored. Nope, we're going to have the Jedi just, just act uncharacteristically like the Padawan's going to hop on a fucking speeder and he's going to go take off for for the, the 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 witch coven thing. Like, I couldn't have been his Jedi Master because the second I tell you stand out and I see you still going for that speeder, I'm force pulling you back or I'm hitting you with force stasis and locking you down. Like, you're not leaving. Like, nothing you do is about to allow me to let you go off on your own because you're on some weird shit where all of a sudden you want to go home because nothing cool is happening here. Sit your youngling ass down. What are we talking about here? And then, of course, instead of making Kelnaka go with him, which Kelnaka would have been the one who caught up and be like, hey, bring your ass back to the ship. They let Soul go, knowing that, like, Soul's whole MO currently is to essentially get Osha so that Osha can be her Padawan. Everybody made bad decisions. But then when you get there, the witches are suddenly like, you know what? We're not going to do the peace thing. We're going to fight. Which, their powers have to be, like, the worst and shittiest powers on the face of the planet. Because you all come together to take control of one Wookiee. But then when that control is broken, you all die. Why would I ever sign up? Why would I ever sign up to use powers like that? Like, who would sign up to have their force powers be, 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 be that devastatingly crippling and lethal? Where it's like, if I mind control someone, if that mind control is broken at any point in time, I just instantaneously die. I instantaneously die so dramatically that it looks as though somebody snapped my neck when I was, when, when I'm force controlling this person, like it would have, it, it, and I've said it before, it would have made more sense if they had just went the, 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 the dark route, which is the Jedi see a force cult. They don't like the force cult. They see the two kids. They know something's up. Soul wants Osha to be his Padawan. So he pushes and manipulates the other Jedi masters to basically wipe out this force cult so that he could get Osha or, or strong arm this force cult so he can get Osha. Things go wrong, lightsabers are ignited, and the Jedi end up wiping out this entire cult and then having a cover-up. But instead, the cover-up is just basically a misunderstanding. Like, I feel as though they should have just told the fucking Jedi Council what happened. Hey, we went to a planet, we encountered a force cult, we met two children, one of them was force-sensitive, I felt the connection in the force, um, the child wanted to come with me, the cult didn't, a skirmish occurred that, that to be quite honest, it wasn't really our fault because they decided to, uh, mind control the fucking Woody, Wookiee Jedi. We fought, the cult died, I took the kid, that's it. Instead, they're like, no, we have to, we have to keep this situation under wraps. We can tell absolutely no one about some generic shit that on his best day, Anakin Skywalker had done like 10 times worse in regards to not only Force Cult, but people out there in the universe 200 years down the line. Like, I feel as though if you're building up the Jedi to be like these bad guys who do bad things, you let them do the bad thing. Like, you let them be the villains. Because now it's just like, oh, this entire situation was just one big fucking misunderstanding. What was the point? What was the point? And the backstory didn't get better or anything. And there were some great theories where they thought that, you know, the Jedi may have used um, uh, manipulation to alter Osha's memories or something along those lines. Nope. She just passed out because of the smoke. And then she woke up on the ship. And that's it. It's... The writing in this show can, is, is, in my opinion, consistently the weakest element of this show. Um, if the writing was better, I feel as though this show would be more well-received. Because, because Keimer is such an interesting Sith, and there are also interesting concepts that are basically put forward in this show, but the writing is done in such a ham-fisted way that it just drags down it just drags it down this I, like if i was to give this this show a rating like if we were in school 
this show as it is currently is like a D minus. But there are concepts in this show that are S tier. Keimer, S tier. The idea of uh, children being born using the force, but requiring like this specific moment where where a virgins is about to happen to harness that power separates it from from Plagueis and Sidious creating Anakin because it's like oh okay on a normal day these witches with their powers would never they were just in the right place at the right time to harness something that gave them the ability to basically create these two twins dope as fuck s tier like the 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 idea that the 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 Jedi operate not only in the light, but also on some level of of gray, S tier. But it's the way in which the writing is done. The writing is just so bad. It's 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 so bad that it just drags everything down, and you're not able to really appreciate some of the smaller nuances. Okay, okay. Therapist, therapist chair sitting is appointment is done. Sorry, there was a lot to unpack. <laughs> I had to, I had to, I, I had to show up to you guys, man. You guys are like, you, you guys in the comment section are like the, you're, 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 you're therapeutic for me. I'm able to like just unload and then read the comments and then have a conversation back and forth for exactly how this episode is just. But we're almost towards the end. Uh, how many more episodes do we have? Let me see the acolyte. Let me see. What was that? Episode seven. So we got one more. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got one more episode, and the season's over. <laughs> oh boy! Like it's it's, it's almost over. <laughs> it's almost over. Where's the Mandalorian? We need a. We need another. Um. We need another. God damn, we need another fucking... We need another season of Mandalorian. We need something else, to be quite honest. Like, we, we, we need something else. 